By all accounts, the attempted assassination of the former Russian spy Sergei Skripal was a disaster. The suspected assassins used a Soviet-era military-grade nerve agent called Novichok. Skripal and his daughter Yulia spent weeks in the hospital recovering. Both would survive. But a British woman, Dawn Sturgis, would not be so lucky. Her boyfriend came across the discarded vial used by the would-be hitmen, disguised as a perfume bottle. Sturgis used the poison on herself and died a week later. The attack had the hallmarks of a Russian operation, and British authorities immediately suspected the Kremlin. As news of the attack broke, a Russian disinformation campaign sprang into action. So there's always been this element of Russian propaganda since Soviet times. It's become much more concentrated, much more focused, much more sophisticated in recent years under the Putin government. The noise became too much for the British authorities, who released the names of the suspects, along with photos of the two in Salisbury. Which is how Alexander Petrov and Ruslan Bashirov found themselves sitting for a television interview on RT, also known as Russia Today. So the RT interview was a remarkable piece of propaganda. And it was no accident that the men appeared on the channel. RT is one of several major news outlets in, in Russia that are either wholly owned or completely controlled by the Russian government. So in this interview, the two talk about their desire to see this great cathedral in, in Salisbury, which all their friends had talked about. And they went on to mention different things that are right out of the Wikipedia entry for Salisbury. But what's interesting is that there's evidence of these two men heading off in the opposite direction from the cathedral uh, to the neighborhood where Skripal and his daughter were staying. The interview, conducted by RT editor-in-chief, Margarita Simonian, left out some important questions. One of which is why Novichok, this mysterious, very powerful Russian nerve agent, was found in their hotel room in the place where they stayed in London. They had no explanation for that. After the interview, the investigative website Bellingcat blows their cover. It turns out that both of them had very clear links to the to the Russian military intelligence agency, the GRU. One had been a doctor, another had a long association, they had identities that could be easily tracked through photos and other means, and they were not at all who they claimed to be, which was innocent tourists. Although widely derided as a failed attempt at distraction, the RT interview and the wider disinformation campaign did have some effect. The point of these campaigns, as far as we can determine, is not so much to convince anyone as it is to cast doubt on official explanations and independent news media accounts of what happened. The consequences for Western societies are not insignificant because if the effect is to move us all into a post-truth society where nobody really knows what's true and what's not, that makes us very much less trusting of official sources of information, from independent news media to government institutions to police investigations. If we can no longer know the truth, then we really have no real way to judge the effectiveness of our government or to make smart political choices.